welcome to our lectures on rotational dynamics so in this uh, rotational dynamics portion i am planning to conduct three lectures first we will be discussing about the basic idea of rotational dynamics linear momentum uh, sorry angular momentum then torque etc then we will be discussing about the moment of inertia calculation of moment of inertia about of different bodies and then uh, some example that is mainly the example of uh, flywheel. So first we will start with a basic idea what is a rigid body. Uh, we know a rigid body is defined as a solid body in which the particles are completely arranged. That is uh, the spacing between the distance between two in the particle is fixed and if we are applying an external force the distance is not changing which in turn means the shape of the body remains same there, will, there won't be any change in the shape of the body even we are applying any force on the body so that such a body is called a rigid body so it can define a rigid body as an object with a mass that holds a very strong rigid shape so uh, when we consider about the motion of a rigid body, there are two different types of motion. Generally we can say that there is a translation motion and there is a rotational motion. So what is the difference between translation and rotational motion? Translation motion we know that the center of mass of an object will move from one point to another. That is uh, the motion of a car is an example of a translation motion. So if you are moving from one moment of uh, center of gravity of the body is displaced from one position to another position that is called a translation motion for example of a rotation motion is the motion motion of an object about an axis okay so there is a fixed axis about that axis if the body is changing its uh, position then it is called a rotational motion okay so motion of uh, a swing is an example of a rotational motion okay so the motion of a door when we are opening a door it is showing rotational motion so these all are some simple examples of rotational motion rotational motion means it is the motion of every point of the body with respect to an axis of rotation so when a rigid body rotates about an axis, every point moves in a circular path with the center at axis of rotation. Okay, so if you nod one point and then you will see the position of the if you trace the position of that that point in different interval of time, you can see that that point is making a circular motion every time when it is rotates. Okay, so let us consider a rigid body uh, which is rotating with respect to an axis z is a dash axis you can see the figure in the figure z is a dash axis is the axis of rotation and the particle is you can assume that the body is moving in anticlockwise direction so first we will draw a reference line let or be a reference line okay that or line makes an angle theta with the x-axis at one interval of time t1 okay at particular interval of time t1 if you measure the angle between the x-axis and the reference line OR, OR, it makes an angle theta. So as time increases, this OR will be moving in anticlockwise direction. So let's say at T2 time, it makes an angle theta 2 with respect to the x-axis. So at T1 time, it is making an angle theta 1 with respect to the x-axis. And at T2 time, it's making an angle theta 2 with respect to the y-axis. Okay, so the time interval between the two measurements is taken as delta t that is t2 minus t1 and the corresponding change in the angle that is angular displacement is nothing but delta theta is equal to theta 2 minus t1 so we define angular velocity as change in the angular displacement in a interval of time that is delta theta by delta t so angular velocity is usually denoted as omega that is equal to d theta by dt so angular velocity of any rotational motion is defined as omega is equal to d theta by d. Angular velocity is generally considered as a vector quantity and the direction of the angular velocity is uh, in a direction perpendicular to the plane of rotation. 
so uh, if this is the plane of rotation that is this this body is making rotation in this plane okay so this is the velocity velocity is usually measured uh, in tangential direct point and r is the uh, position vector so if you measure the angular velocity angular velocity will be always perpendicular to the plane of rotation so, okay this red line indicate the direction of the angular velocity and it is usually measured in units of radian per second next we will define angular acceleration the angular acceleration is uh, defined as the change in the angular velocity with respect to time okay the change in angular velocity is similar to uh, linear acceleration the angular acceleration is defined as a change in the angular velocity of the rotating body in a unit time okay that is again it is a vector quantity consisting of magnitude component and this angular acceleration has defined directions so it is a vector quantity and it is unit of angular acceleration is radian per second square and it is usually denoted as alpha alpha is equal to d omega by dt so angular acceleration omega alpha is defined as d omega by dt now we will uh, try to derive a relation connecting linear velocity and angular velocity so let us consider a body which is moving in anti clockwise direction as shown in the figure that the body is rotating with respect to an axis and this rotation direction of rotation is in the anti clockwise direction let us consider the one point say this point you take consider and it this is at a distance r from the from the axis center of uh, axis of rotation okay that r is the distance between the uh, axis of rotation and the point which we are considering and let it moves an angle d theta in a short interval of time dt it moves a distance angle it moves an angle d theta in a short instant of time dt and the corresponding uh, aerial i mean uh, radial displacement is ds okay so it moves a distance ds but corresponding angular displacement is d theta okay so we define the linear velocity you know that linear velocity is the displacement by time so ds is the displacement dt is a time so velocity is equal to ds by dt but from the figure we know that angle is equal to arc per radius so arc is equal to angle into the distance radius so this, if we consider that a small angular displacement so ds is equal to r d theta so substituting for ds we will get velocity is equal to d by dt of r d theta that is equal to r into d theta by dt we know that d theta by dt is nothing but our omega so velocity is equal to r omega so this we know that oh this velocity uh, mega on our vector quantities so we define v is equal to uh, in vector representation vector v is equal to vector r cos vector omega omega is a vector that is missing from this slide and let us take it as omega velocity velocity is a vector quantity r is r is a vector quantity omega is a vector quantity so there is a gross product between r and omega will you give will give you the linear velocity now next will be the relation between linear acceleration and angular acceleration so linear acceleration as we know it is defined as uh, velocity by time so dv by dt a is equal to dv by dt but we have already derived velocity is equal to r omega okay so a is equal to d by dt of r omega so r is taken as a constant it is not changing with respect to time r is a fixed quantity so r into d omega by dt so angular linear velocity is equal to r into alpha so linear velocity is equal to the uh, distance into the angular acceleration next we will be discussing an important property of a rotating body that is angular momentum so angular momentum is a measure of the rotational motion okay so uh, how good is the rotational property of the material that is measured by angular momentum so it is defined as the product of the linear momentum and the perpendicular distance between the point and the axis of rotation so l is defined angular momentum is usually represented as l the vector quantity l is usually represented is measured as the product of the 
linear momentum that is p and the perpendicular distance between the point and the axis of rotation so uh, it is r is the perpendicular distance from the point and the axis of rotation so in general we can define l is equal to r cross p so r cross p will you will give the angular momentum so p is we know mv so p it, it can be written as mvr sin theta q upon the uh, cross product it becomes sin theta so mvr sin theta so the axis of rotation so from this figure you can see this is the axis of rotation and this is the uh, direction of r this is the momentum direction p so if this is r and this is pre p the cross product will be perpendicular to both so if it is moving in anti clockwise direction by right hand rule we can consider that the direction of l is in the upward direction okay l is equal to r plus p suppose if it is moving in the clockwise direction the direction of l will be downwards it will be downwards okay so depending upon the position of r and p the direction of r l will be changing now this is now next property is uh, torque a uh, torque is uh, for <coughs> uh, linear acceleration we need force similarly for uh, linear momentum in order to change the linear momentum we need to have a torque so uh, that is a force is equivalent to linear acceleration in a body similarly uh, torque is required to produce angular acceleration so tau it is represented as tau okay tau is equal to r cross f it is defined as r cross f it is defined as the rotating effect of a force about a point and is measured as the product of the force and the perpendicular distance between the point and the line of force okay it is defined as the product of the force and the perpendicular distance between the point and the line of force sorry uh, so this is uh, the direction of the distance and this is the direction of the force so r cross f will be having a torquing torque uh, effect as a torque will be along this direction it is perpendicular to both distance and force so this is just an animation and you can see it in wikipedia all more details will be available in the wikipedia i have taken this picture from wikipedia so this <coughs> the person suppose it's like a uh, screwdriver action so when we rotate in the anti clockwise direction it will be going uh, the screwdriver screw will be going into the plane and if we are doing it in the sorry if you are doing it in the clockwise direction it will be going into the plane if you are doing it in any clockwise direction this screw will be coming up so it is just a demonstration of our cross effort a uh, demonstration of the torque effect so let us consider some special cases what will happen if r is equal to 0 okay when r is equal to 0 what will happen to the torque we can see that when r is equal to 0 the torque value r or r cross f will be equal to 0 that is the force has no torque effect or it is if it is applied along the axis of rotation r is equal to 0 means we are applying the force along the axis of rotation if we are applying the force along the axis of rotation there won't be any torque which means the rotating effect will be 0 okay suppose if theta is equal to 0 if the angle between r and f is equal to 0 or 180 you can see that sin 0 and sin 180 will be equal to 0 which means again there is no torquing torque effect the force has no effect of its that is force has no effect if its line of action passes through the origin angle theta is equal to 0 or 190 means the line of action is passing through the origin so if it is passing through the origin the torque will be equal to 0 and what will be the maximum possible value of torque suppose the angle is equal to 90 degree the torque value is equal to rf sin 90 sin 90 will be 1 so rf will, that is the maximum value so the, the torque is maximum if the force is perpendicular to the line joining okay the torque of a given force is maximum 
if it is per if it is perpendicular to the line joining the particle and the axis of rotation okay so these are uh, some of the examples when a door we are opening when we are trying to open a door we usually apply the force on the handle okay so then the torquing effect will be maximum so when a door opens the force on the handle produces a rotating effect about the hinges okay so if you are applying uh, a force uh, in the handle okay so if you are applying the force along the handle uh, it will creating a rotating effect on the uh, uh, hinges okay so okay so if you are uh, if the force is coming closer to the hinges we need to apply more and more forces to open the door the force which we need to apply up to open a door is minimum at the handle so if the direction if r in decreases more and more force is required to produce the torque which means we need to apply more force to open the door if we are pushing it near to the hinges similarly another example is the motion of a bicycle the force on the pedal the force on the pedal produces a rotating effect on the wheel similarly uh, the metal cap if you are trying to open a metal cap it is an example of the uh, torque effect so the opening of a metal cap by applying rotating effect and another as i already mentioned the motion of a screw driver is another example of now we uh, will uh, derive a relation connecting torque and the angular momentum as we have already seen the angular momentum is defined as l is equal to r cross b now if we differentiate l with respect to time dl by dt so there are two quantities dr by dt cross p plus by plus r cross dp by dt so just say uh, we are applying the product rule dr by dt cross p plus r cross dp by dt okay so if we take the first term on the right hand side dr by dt cross p dr by dt is nothing but our velocity so velocity cross a uh, velocity v cross m v so m v cross v will be equal to zero the so that means the first term on the right hand side will be equal to zero so dl by dt is equal to r cross dp by dt as we know dp by dt is rate of change of momentum with respect to time is nothing but or force so r cross f that is equal to so dl by dt is equal to r cross f which is equal to tau that is our torque so rate of change of angular momentum is equal to the torque applied on the body now if there is no torque on the body if tau is equal to zero we know that dl by dt is equal to zero which means l is a constant this is known as law of conservation of angular momentum that is if there is no torque acting on the body the angular momentum remains conserved that is called law of conservation of angular momentum there are a few examples for that is the planetary motion the motion of the seam are just some examples of law of conservation of angular momentum